So you guys have asked for it today, we're going to be looking back at my championship predictions from the start of the season. Now I made these predictions almost a year ago to the day I made, I uploaded this video on the 29th of July 2019. As we all know, a year's a long time in football and the championship being probably the most unpredictable league in the world, it was a pretty tough video to make. But I think I've had my fair share of decent and shocking predictions in here, it's sort of a balance I'd say. Let me know down below at the start of the season what's been your prediction that was the most off. If you're going to enjoy today's video make sure to leave a like, but without any further to do, let's hop into these predictions. So starting out at the bottom of my table, I did have Charlton Athletic, which wasn't all too far away in the end. I made this prediction before the transfer window had shut, and I just thought looking at the start of the season, their squad was looking way too thin. In the end, Lee Bowie, I think, has done a really good job for them this season. It went down to the final day, but just couldn't work against all the elements that he was up against and couldn't quite keep them up. But two places off, they were only three points off the bottom in the end in real life, so it's not the worst prediction in the world. I think what went into me making that prediction was they lost quite a few players that over the summer a few players who had been vital in them getting promoted returned from their loan spells as well they just couldn't quite hang on to their championship status unfortunately in 23rd place i had wigan athletic which is technically spot on but i can't really claim this as a great prediction as they've been you know put into this place thanks to the point deduction which i had no idea about a year ago overall wigan have surprised me and like i said i did make this prediction video before the transfer window had shut and Wigan did make a couple of moves later on into that window and I just wasn't completely sold on Paul Cook at the time they were obviously coming off the back of a season where they just about survived I thought this season with the competition that I did see down at the bottom of the table it might just be a bit too much for Wigan and to be fair to me for the first half of the season they were scrapping it out in this part of the table weren't they and then from January onwards they just had an incredible upturn of form and then obviously unfortunately then were given the point deduction which we're still waiting to find the outcome of but I did get that one spot on but I can't really claim it as a great prediction like I say but then to probably my worst prediction of the video I had Millwall to get relegated in 22nd place and they went on to finish 8th, they just missed out on the playoffs in the end and I had them to go down, to be fair my reasoning behind this one, I look back on the video that I made, the season prior to this they just finished 21st in the league so they just about scraped survival, the momentum which they finished last season with they were on a really bad run of form, they only won 2 of their last 14 matches, the way things were going under Neil Harris, I thought that his time there was running out but they'd look to stick with him, in the end Millwall actually surprised me they parted company with Neil Harris quite early on into the season when they weren't doing so well after spending a little bit of money in the summer as well but then it was the introduction of Guy Rout which really gave them this spark and going forward into the future I think Millwall have got quite a bit to look forward to especially if they do invest in the right areas of the squad over the summer so Millwall I was way off on that one I think that is probably going to be my worst prediction coming up today really they finished eighth at the end and I had them to get relegated in 21st position I had Luton Town I'm happy with this prediction a lot of people had Luton to get relegated at the start of the season I edged them just about to survive and in the end they went ahead and did that obviously it was a great escape on the final day to avoid relegation they finished 19th in the end in real life so it wasn't a million miles away on this one as we all know at the championship especially this season at the bottom of the championship it was just so ridiculously tight so anyone you know if you get them within like four places in this region of the table I class that as a good prediction really obviously I'd seen glimpses of them from last season in league one and they looked to try and continue that into the championship this season had a few bumps along the way but then obviously with the introduction of Nathan Jones toward the end of the season that gave them the spark really in 20th position I had QPR and I was quite a way off on this one they went ahead and finished in 13th in the end now my reasoning behind this one and why I thought they'd struggle is Mark Warburton was given a really tough job at the start of the season he had to brace, basically assemble a new starting 11 on free transfers and loan moves they lost a lot of players over that summer Luke Freeman being one who I thought they'd really struggle to replace little did I know that Averiese would really break through this year as well as that the goals of Matt Smith as well I thought they'd quite miss but Jordan Hugo was a good replacement for him in the end. And like I say, considering the limitations that Mark Warburton's worked under this season, QPR have done fairly well and they proved me wrong. In 19th position, I then had Barnsley. And finally, I can say that this was a decent prediction, you know, for the whole of the season, really. They've been rooted to pretty much the bottom of the table, you know. They've been bottom three pretty much all year, haven't they? But on the last day, the nature of the championship, it is what it is. They managed to survive. Finishing 21st in the end, so me predicting in 19th, doesn't end up looking like the worst prediction in the world. Coming up to the championship this season, we all saw that it was a very young squad and that could have gone one of two ways but I thought they'd have enough goals in them. Unfortunately Daniel Stendhal didn't manage to see out the full season there but the introduction of Gerhard Struber really made all the difference for them. In 18th I had Birmingham pretty happy with this one as well they went on to this 20th in the end it was a really turbulent summer for Birmingham you know they lost their top scorer Chelems ripping that many goals out of a team was always going to be a struggle for Birmingham to go on and replace him as well as that they had the manager 
serial, you know, merry-go-round once again at Birmingham, losing Gary Monk and then appointing Pep Clotter. Clotter, I wasn't all too sold on, obviously, an inexperienced manager. It could have gone one of two ways at Birmingham. Ultimately, though, for Birmingham, it has been a very inconsistent season. I think that's the way I'd sum them up this year, really. And it'll be the last two summers now where they've sold really a big marquee player. Last season, Chathams. This season, Jude Bellingham. They need to invest that money right going into next year. In 17th position, I had Reading. Once again, pretty happy with this one. They finished 14th in the end, but there was only three points separating 17th and 14th, so not a million miles away on this one. I was a little bit gutted that things didn't work out for Jose Gomez. I thought they finished last season under Gomez, actually playing some really good football. They had a lot of positive results under him. I thought going into this season, they'd have the foundations to build upon something. I just thought it would end up being a little bit of an inconsistent one, as has been the case for a lot of teams around this region of the table. Obviously, a few years prior to this, they had finished in the top six um, under Yapstan, and then since then, they'd had sort of been lingering around 17th. I've said it a lot of times throughout this season, but there is scope to really build something with this Reading side. They are just ridiculously unpredictable. I go as far to say they're the most unpredictable side in the league. They're impossible to make a score prediction on. Then in 16th position, we do have Hull City. In the end, I am quite the way off on this one as they finish rock bottom in the end. Now, I'm sure a lot of people, I don't think many people would have had Hull in their bottom three at the start of the season. With the squad they had then, Grant McCann was coming in, who I thought was a really promising upcoming manager. He was taking on a squad which didn't look all too bad at the start of the season, obviously. They added a few bits of quality here and there. You know, Tommy's I thought would be a really good option with the supply coming from Grosicki and Bernie. At the start of the season, they were flirting with the idea of the playoffs at one point. But we all know the story of what happened, you know, the January departures and it has been a bit of a toxic season for Hull overall. In 15th, they had Sheffield Wednesday. This one's pretty much spot on. They finished 16th in the end, finishing above the 16th on goal difference. So there wasn't really much else I could have done with this one. Now, Sheffield Wednesday in the summer, there was a lot of unknowns about them. It was a time where Steve Bruce had recently left and gone to Newcastle. And I actually made this prediction when they were without a manager. We then saw Gary Monk coming in uh, very close to the start of the season. And it has overall for Wednesday been a disappointing season. You know, over the past like five or so years, a lot of the time they have been flirting with the top six, but the managers that have been there recently have been working with what is quite the aging squad. And looking back a year ago, I couldn't really justify putting them much higher than 15th. And in the end, that paid off because it has been a very inconsistent year for them. In 14th, they had Blackburn. I was a little bit off on this prediction. They went ahead and finished in 11th in the end. I thought they'd be a comfortable mid-table side this season. But I think especially given some of the injuries that they had, they've done, they did fairly well to hang on in the top six race for as long as they did, you know, losing a player like Bradley Dark halfway through the season. I mean, we saw what happened to Hull when they lost one of their key players you know Blackburn actually did fairly well considering the circumstances just falling short of the top six in the end. In 13th they actually had Michael Preston North then so I was a little bit off with where we finish in the end I was a little bit more negative than it needs to be Preston finishing ninth in the end. The reason I had us so low down was because I didn't think we had a particularly great summer transfer window we just lost the goals of Callum Robinson who was absolutely huge for us last season in a campaign where we finished 14th. Coming into this season then we of course we made the signing of Patrick Bell which I thought was a really good one for a strong at the back. I just didn't know if we'd have enough goals and then losing Callum Robinson. Bringing in someone like David Nugent who was of course a fantastic you know sentimental signing at the time I thought but realistically he was never going to score the, you know more than five goals this season let alone the two he, he only got. Thankfully for us though this season there have been some players who really have up their game from last season you know Daniel Johnson, Declan Rudd are two examples of players who I'd say have been head and shoulders above the levels they were playing at last season. In 12th I had Middlesbrough. This one not turning out to be the best prediction. They finished 17th. Now I expected Middlesbrough to have a bit of a drop off from last season. They finished 7th under Tony Pulis but there were quite a few changes made there over the summer. You know Jonathan Wongate was coming in his first year as a manager and there was this whole promise of you know a new brand of football coming in. I remember the first game of the season actually was really entertaining 3-3 draw against Luton where we thought Middlesbrough would be a lot more attack heavy this season but as the games went on it became clear clearer and clearer that this Borough side just wasn't the same. You know, last season under Pulis, they, were, they weren't the greatest team to watch, but they were rigid. And this season, they seemed to lose a lot of that, despite the squad being fairly similar to last time around. I know they did lose some big players over the summer. You know, they lost lights of Aidan Flint. They no longer had Johnny B. McHale. So there were a number of factors that went against Middlesbrough, but I was expecting them to be, you know, comfortable mid-table. I didn't see them being in the relegation battle that they ended up in. In 11th place, I had Swansea City, and I was a fair way off on this one. They went ahead and finished in the top six. In the end, now Swansea, I think, started the season really well 
and finished the season really well. They sort of bounced up and down between mid-table and the top six throughout the season. Their form very much flowed in and out. And there were a few question marks over Swansea over the summer. You know, they just lost Graham Potter, who I thought was building the foundations for a really exciting project at Swansea. They lost the likes of Ollie McBurney, Dan James. But their returning players seem to have quite the impact. You know, Borja Bastan at the start of the season scored a bucket full of goals. AU as well has been a consistent performer throughout the year. And then the signs they made in January seem to make all the difference for them pushing on to that next level. 10th position I had Huddersfield. Now, I was a fair way off on this one. I expected them to be maybe up and around the top six. It's always the hardest predictions to make the three teams coming up and the three going down because you never really know how they're going to settle into the new league. You know, teams coming down from the Premier League, we've seen countless examples of it throughout the years, of that bad momentum from a relegation carrying on into the Championship season and that, especially at the start of the season, was happening for Huddersfield. You know, Jan Seawert did not last long at all in the job. Then he kept, the Cowley brothers then came in and rescued it for them but on paper at the start of the season, it didn't look like a bad Championship squad they had. They still had Aaron Moy at the time when I made the prediction. Colin Grant, I expected to score a lot of goals which he went on and did. But defensive issues were really highlighted at the start of the season and then ultimately went on to finish 18th. So that one was, I was a little bit off on that one. Derby 9th, I was pretty much bang on with. They finished 10th. It was a busy summer for Derby after losing Frank Lampard, the introduction of Philip Koku, the lone players they had last season. That was a lot of quality that was ripped out of their squad. But I still fancied them to be in this region of the table. I just thought they'd fall short of the top six, which was the case in the end. I think that this season, Koku has laid down the foundations for what could become a really successful team going into next season. A lot of the youth they brought through this time round. And Derby are another club who, I know I know, pretty much every championship club gets unlucky with injuries, but Derby did as well, you know, losing Christian Bielik, who was really starting to show his worth. It's not been a bad season for Derby overall. They've set the foundations for next year. In eighth place, I had Forrest, so I was pretty spot on with this one as well. They finished seventh. Somehow, I have no idea how, after occupying a place in the top six for virtually all the season, they went ahead and dropped out on what was the most ridiculous final day we've seen in a long, long time. With Forrest, there were quite a few unknowns over the summer as well. You know, we didn't really know all too much about Sabri Lamucci and how he'd do there. For the most part, it had been a really successful season for Forrest. You know, they've been just sort of the nearly men of the top six for quite a few seasons now, hadn't they? We always saw them at the start of the season as a team who had potential to sneak into the top six, but just wasn't quite good enough to get in there. This season, it looked like they'd go ahead and do that until the final day. It's a very good squad that Forrest have in there. I think they've got some very talented individuals, and I mean, I'm still none the wiser how they missed out on it, to be honest. In seventh, they had Bristol. City and I know I predicted them to finish outside the top six but I, I thought that maybe you know, in the back of my mind this could really be the season for Bristol City they went on and finished 12th in the end they really dipped down come the final few weeks didn't they but I thought they had a really good summer transfer window they lost Adam Webster but they reinvested you know a lot of that money into the right areas of the squad I thought you know Hannah Mosengo came in Adam Nagy into midfield as well they got Callison and De Silva both on permanent deals. Daniel Bentley came in. Casey Palmer as well, who was superb at the start of the season. Overall, they had everything they needed to go on and mount a really strong push for the top six, but it just didn't quite happen. We saw them part company with Lee Johnson towards the end of the season as well. Into my top six, and in sixth place, I then had Stoke City. I'd probably say that this is the second, like, absolute clanger that I've had on this video so far. The first one being Millwall. Now, Stoke improved on last season, albeit by one place. They finished 15th this season. I thought that things were finally starting to come together for Nathan Jones at Stoke over the summer. You know, if we look back on their form at the end of last season, they only lost two of their last 15 matches. They made themselves a really tough team to beat and they had a bit of a refresh over the squad over the summer. You know, they brought in a bit of, you know, what I'd call championship experience, but the quality just didn't seem to be there at the start of the season. Obviously, Nathan Jones didn't last too long into it. Since O'Neill has come in, though, there have been more positive signs for Stoke, but, you know, way off the pace for a top six finish like I predicted. But now we move on into the top five and I'm pretty much spot on with all of these. So coming in in fifth place, I had Cardiff. They went on to finish in fifth, albeit it did take a managerial change for them to get there. I, I did think that Neil Warnock would be the man for them. It looked like this might be his last year in football for Cardiff and I thought that he'd want to go out on a high. Didn't quite happen for him. You know, they, you know, they were languishing in mid-table. They then brought in Neil Harris, who I wasn't really sold on at the time, but, you know, we've given a lot of credit to him over the last few videos. He's done really well there. I think even looking back to Cardiff last season, they were fairly unlucky to get relegated in the end. And the squad that they've got this season, Season. The core of that squad is still very much the same as the last one that got promoted. So that's why I had them in the top six. They went on ahead and did that. In fourth place, I had Brentford. They went on and finished in third, but on goal difference. So once again, pretty much spot on with this prediction as well. With Brentford in seasons gone by, they've had no issues with scoring goals. Even going into this season, I still back them to score a lot, despite losing Neil Mape. You know, still the likes of Ben Rama and Ollie Watkins and then Bimu, who I didn't quite expect to be as good as he has been stepped up. But the difference for Brentford this season has been how 
how tight they've been able to keep things at the back, you know. Defensive signings have been absolutely huge. They completely revamped that area of the squad. The introductions of Ethan Pinnock, Pontus Janssen, David Rea coming in net and Christian Norgard as well. They have played some scintillating football this season. And at the start of the year, there were some questions over Thomas Frank, you know. Brentford didn't get off to a particularly great start. And if, you know, had they started the season better, probably would have gone ahead and got automatic promotion. Obviously, they're now in the gamble of the playoffs. We did have their first leg of the other night where they did lose against Swansea. Rico Henry controversially getting sent off. We'll wait to see what happens in there, but for that prediction, I'm, 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 I'm happy with it. In third place, I then had Fulham. A lot of people at the start of the year were backing Fulham for the top two. Quite a few, I look back on some of the comments as well, were predicting Fulham for the title. Now, on paper, at the start of the season, Fulham probably had the best squad in the league. You know, that forward three was ridiculous. We all saw Mitrovic scoring a bucket full of goals, which he went on to do. But there were just a couple of things about that Fulham squad that I wasn't overly sold on. Uh, not enough for me to back them for the top two, at least. Most of them coming from, obviously, Scott Parker's sort of inexperienced compared to the other two managers who are predicted to get into the top two. As well as that, some defensive issues which did crop up throughout the season, especially early on. But Fulham were knocking around in this region of the table for the majority of the season just fell short of the top two which is where I sort of thought they'd be and then moving on into the top two in second place I had West Brom so spot on with this one under Slavin Bilic and coming off the back of last year's playoff heartbreak they did lose you know quite a bit of firepower from last season in both Dwight Gale and Jay Rodriguez but they invested into what was a good core group of players you know they really improved the span of that team and that's been you know absolutely crucial for them as well as that they've also had a ridiculous amount of good options from the bench it's a really deep, good championship squad with a lot of quality dotted all over. And under the guidance of Slavin Bilic, they managed to go one step further than they went last season. And uh, like I say, I'm happy with that one. And of course, that then means Leeds United in first place. So I've got this one as well. So for the top five, I'm pretty much spot on. So I'm fairly happy with that, considering how unpredictable the championship can be in this region of the table, especially when you're predicting it at the start of the season. But I felt like last season, Leeds really laid down the foundations. You know, they missed out on the end. Everyone took the mick out of them before they you know, bottling it in the end, but realistically, that was Bielsa's first season in English football. They didn't spend a whole lot of money last summer, and he just improved each player individually. He got them all into playing this ridiculously effective system, albeit they run out of steam at the end of the season, and probably the break in football actually helped Leeds with them not getting burnt out towards the end. But I think that the edge that Bielsa gave them, accompanied with some of the other signings that they made, to be honest, I didn't think that I didn't know much about Ben White going into this season, and I thought the, the loss of Pontus Janssen would really affect them. But Bielsa I saw as, you know, head and shoulders above any other manager in the league, really. And I thought that that would get Leeds over the line. And in the end, they went ahead and did that, you know, playing some fantastic football along the way. And so, as you can see to the side of me, guys, there are my championship predictions from the start of the season. To be honest with you, I don't think that's too bad at all. Considering, you know, how unpredictable this league is, there are a couple of absolute clangers in there. You know, most notably the Stoke and the Millwall prediction. I was way off with those two. But apart from that... That's not an awful looking league table. Hull's another one that I was quite a way off with, to be fair. Huddersfield and Middlesbrough as well. You, but, you know, the majority of the top six, you know, the top five, I'm very happy with. So overall, considering I predicted that before the transfer window was shut as well, I don't think I've done too bad of a job there. So guys, let me know in the comments down below, what do you make of my championship predictions? Did you do any better? I want to know your guys' thoughts in the comments down below. But other than that, that will now wrap it up for today's video, guys. So thank you very much for watching. If you did go on to enjoy, then make sure to leave a like. It is always massively appreciated as well that make sure you do subscribe for some regular championship content but other than that thanks for watching and i'll see you all in the next one